Hey guys, today as a family, we're going to one of the most popular Taiwanese dumpling restaurants in the world called Ting Tai Fung. And I've never been before. It's one of Risa's favorite restaurants. So I'm excited to see if we can make dumplings healthy. Let's go find out. Hey guys, we just got to Team Typhon. Uh, remember, my name is Menya, just like Kenny with an M. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, hit the notification button, and give this video a thumbs up so I know that you guys liked it. Let's go check it out. So, first look at the menu. There are a lot of options. Um, everything here is written both in uh, in Japanese and in English. So a menu this big for me is actually, is essentially overwhelming because there's just too many options. So it depends on what I'm trying to do. So if I came here and my goal was to eat reasonably well, so reasonably lean, um, the first thing I would aim for was just kind of laying down a base of vegetables. I, ooh. Ooh. So uh, our food just came. It looks like we have jellyfish, <laughs> jellyfish, uh, kind of Shanghai style sprouts, and then chicken, and then these kind of layers of the different layers of dumplings. So right now it looks like we've got three different layers, and I'm pretty sure we need a whole bunch more. But it's um it's an exciting first start. And again, a really good spread. You, like so far, we have basically just have veggies and meat, uh, which is an awesome start. So so far so good. What do we got, buddy? Uh-huh. 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 Okay. So what are you eating there? What's this? Chashu. Chashu? What's chashu? Chashu is like uh, ramen, uh -huh. but it's like ramen with more meat. Ramen with more meat. So as you can see, the kids have been doing some serious work on the food already. <laughs> but I'm going to show you guys how we're supposed to do this. So they have this convenient card here to show you how you're supposed to eat dumplings. So basically step one is you put the sauce kind of in the appropriate place. Step two, you dip, I think, the dumpling right into the sauce. And then it looks like step three, you then put the dumpling onto your spoon and from there you basically put it to your mouth. Take a small bite out of the dumpling so that you get the juices out so it doesn't burn your tongue when you first bite into it. And then you take the whole thing and just chew it. So I'm going to show you guys how that's done. So Josh prepared my sauce earlier, which is right here. Dumpling into the sauce. And then onto the spoon. I'm gonna add a little extra ginger because I like it a lot. I'm gonna take a bite, a little bite out to get the juice out. Suck it out and then enjoy. Mmm. Fantastic. Really, really good. So Luna loves chahan, as you can see, so that's what she's going through right now. So the general idea with when we go out to eat as a family is the kids always want chahan or ramen or pizza or some really calorie-dense food. And frankly, as an eight-year-old and a 10-year-old, they can afford to eat that kind of thing, no problem all the time. So we typically get that for them. We just ensure that there are also vegetables like the spinach you see here. Um, but when it comes to Risa and I, we tend to focus more on the spinach, like the meat, and then obviously some dumplings. Some dumplings are okay. So kind of striking that balance for yourself is probably what's most important. So again, if you're just straight in it to win it, go the chahan kind of ramen route, that's okay. But if you're trying to focus on, again, eating a little more consciously, then you're gonna to wanna to focus on like the meat side and the veggie side, which is kind of what we're focusing on here. So we just looked it up because we wanted to figure out what is the skin that's around the gyoza. Gyoza skin is made out of wheat, flour, salt, and oil. And again, when it comes to wheat and meat, gluten in particular, it definitely has a pretty big impact on, kind of for me, inflammation and bloating in my stomach. So when I start eating wheat, I can really feel myself fill up really quickly, even though basically all I ate is a bunch of these things, some chicken, a little bit of jellyfish, and then spinach, and then I still end up getting really full pretty quickly. So that's, again, me, I have a pretty high sensitivity to gluten, so interesting. Just kind of an FYI, there may be options that don't use a kind of uh, wheat flour base, but this definitely does, and it is delicious again. But um, it's, it ends up being a little more filling than maybe I'd want to see. So 
So these are amai cherompo, and they consist of sweet beans, uh, mango, and sweet potatoes. And these do not go in sauce, you just kind of eat them as is. Just make sure they're not way too hot. As you can see, Luna and Josh are struggling hard to get, to get the sweetness in their mouth. <laughs> as quickly as possible. Uh, we're going to try in a minute. I was going to let it cool off, but I guess I'll just embarrass myself by trying to eat it as is. See what happens. Yeah, it's delicious. You can see it, but... Whoa. You can see the mango and the beans uh, right on the inside. Oh, Luna's got a good visual too. Mine's falling apart now. So you can see this mango right in the middle. It's got the beans around it and it's also got sweet potato. It's really, really good. Really delicious. So this is a perfect example of why I really like Asian desserts, in particular Taiwanese. Because instead of having a whole bunch of really, really highly processed stuff, they've actually just thrown in sweet beans, which are obviously all natural, um, some sweet potato, and then mango. And maybe they've heightened this with a bit of sugar. I'm assuming they've added sugar to this mix to make it as sweet as it is. But even so, it's really quite natural. Um, and that's, again, I think that's one of the perks of the way they do desserts in Asia in general. And then in particular, this restaurant, which is Taiwanese. But also you see this kind of thing across Japan. And that's one of the, one of the reasons I really end up liking uh, Japanese desserts. So probably no one's this particular except me, but as a person who doesn't actually eat any caffeine, it's worth pointing out that the tea actually does have caffeine, even if it's technically, even if it's decaf. So when you go to a place like this, if you're not a caffeine drinker, I mean, the tea is delicious. I'd encourage you to drink the tea, but if you're trying to stay away from caffeine or that's not your thing, just bear in mind that most teas in most restaurants will be regular caffeinated tea. And so they're obviously going to have some caffeine in it. Um, it's delicious and I think it's part of the experience. So yeah, I think it's fine. But if it's like late night, and especially in the case of the kids, it's probably not a great idea because their bedtime's in uh, probably 30 minutes to an hour and they're going to be uh, uh, running pretty wild if they have too much of the tea. So just kind of an FYI when it comes to tea in a restaurant like this. Technically, Risa and I are going to the gym right after this, so this is not a problem, but just FYI. So this is sticky rice with, I think, steamed pork on the inside. It's called chimaki. Uh, I haven't ever tried this actually, so this is my first time. You basically cut it with your ahashi, pull out some of the meat, uh, and then I guess you put those together. Mm, oh shit, good. So I just tried the vegetable dumpling, which I really wanted to like, but it turns out I don't. Basically, it's kind of like eating this, which is again, stir fried spinach, I think, or like watercress with bread around it, or like a breaded a breaded version of that, a, a steamed breaded version of that. Um, not my favorite, but I guess if you wanted to just eat vegetables or you're, you, you've got to you know, take a vegan approach or a vegetarian approach, it definitely is an option. Not my favorite. I would definitely say the kind of pork uh, frozen in chicken broth kind of situation, which is their normal dumpling, is delicious. It's kind of the, the perfect flavor with regard to like saltiness and sweetness. So to each his own, but definitely my preference is on this side, uh, that guy right there. So this looks like shrimp shirompo, which is basically a piece of shrimp on top, and then the inside I think it's our same combination from before. So it's basically we had before, but except now we have shrimp on top. So we're gonna try the same situation and see how this tastes. Dip, spoon, bit of ginger. Uh, I'm just gonna go all in instead of biting it first. Mm. Really hot. Bite it first. Definitely bite it first. So Risa just asked me, um, how do I like it? And I realized that my answer is pretty simple. I, I love this. It tastes delicious. But um, I think I'm really personally drawn to extremely simple food, meaning like most importantly, food that doesn't typically make me feel really full, either as a result of bloating or just kind of the, the kind of food it is. So with dumplings and me personally, 
again, amazing. Come here and try this. It's fantastic. I'd, I'd give this like minimum four stars. If I were a real big dumpling person, I'm sure I'd give it a five because it is really, really good. I would actually love to explore a version of this where the bread that encompasses the meat is actually made from some kind of vegetable source. I don't know how that worked. I don't know if that's possible, but if that were an option, that would be really interesting to try. All right, so we just finished the meal. I am extremely full. Uh, full. I think everyone's really, really full. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the bill. So we are at a total of, we had a lot of food, but uh, which is probably like, oh, did I read it wrong? Oh, that's without tax, sorry. Which is basically probably 140 bucks, I want to say. Um, so all things considered, it was really, really good and for feeding four people, I guess that breaks down to yeah, a reasonable amount of money. That's probably like 4,000 yen-ish, a little, a little less than 4,000, 3,500 yen uh, per person. So not too bad, but not also super cheap, but it's dinner time and it's a pretty popular restaurant. So I guess it's a pretty fair price. Again, in terms of like the macro comp for the food, not, not necessarily comparable to Kinik Shukudo, which is specifically meant to be like really lean and really healthy. So overall, the macro composition, just from looking at it, this looks pretty good. But if you're coming here and you're trying to eat pretty healthily, again, it can be done by simply keeping your base vegetables like we did with the spinach. And then you can pretty much go to town on a bunch of the dumplings. But if you want it to go even more lean, you, you definitely can do it. They have some options in the menu that are actually strictly just meat. And then there is no kind of wheat, flour, bread covering. So that's also an option. Um, so yeah, I give this place probably on the, on the health scale, I'd probably give this place still about a four. You could do pretty well if you really tried. We didn't try too hard tonight. It was basically a, like a cheat meal for me. And then in terms of taste, I, again, I give like a 4.5 or maybe even it's creeping on that five. So guys, we just finished eating at Jing Tai Fan. It was delicious. Uh, again, if you wanted to keep it really healthy, you definitely can. We opted for a kind of middle of the road. We stayed away from the really heavy stuff, but we still ate a bunch of stuff that maybe wouldn't be on my normal menu at home. Delicious food. Remember to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and please hit that notifications button, and we'll see you guys next time.